One simple game of Candy Crush, one simple game of Tetris, whatever it is, is all it takes to justify bringing one more game in, one more game in, and it all comes running back to you full-fledged and you're addicted again. Do you have a son or daughter that plays video games, or maybe you yourself play video games, you're wondering if it's bad for you or not, or maybe you're an addict for video games and you're just trying to get rid of it totally. Well, I'm going to be covering all of that in this video today with some best tips and strategies for all of those things as well as the research behind whether or not it's good for you or not so good for you. I want to tell you a quick story. Once upon a time, I was a video game addict who played World of Warcraft for more than 16 hours a day, every single day, seven days a week, the end. That's it. That's all I did. That was my life. I had low self-esteem. I was accomplishing nothing in my life. But today, I play no video games at all. I'm completely weaned off of it. There's no video game activity going on. As someone who's been a personal victim of video game addiction and abuse, as well as just researching the topic in general, I can speak to it being a serious issue and a not so serious issue. And it all comes down to how many hours you play. After all, the internet is full of research studies supporting both positive benefits of playing video games and then the negatives of playing video games. So who makes the stronger case? Well first, let's look at the positive. If you're worried about your son or daughter playing video games a little bit, don't be worried so much. As a matter of fact, studies have shown significant improvements in the brain when kids play video games. Studies have been cited and have shown that playing video games actually increases memory capacity in kids, as well as helping kids with dyslexia, improving their reading abilities, their decision-making abilities. There's also been significant studies to show that there has been an increase in brain matter in uh, kids that are playing video games. Some kids are actually getting smarter through playing video games. And there's also other elements like an improvement in cognitive function, hand-eye coordination, and teamwork. So there's a variety of other areas that improve alongside of playing video games. And this whole idea that video gamers are somehow mindless and it's a waste of space and you're wasting your time is just complete nonsense. And as a matter of fact, Elon Musk, quite possibly one of the smartest people living among us today, the founder of Tesla, tweeted about playing Overwatch. He's a, he's a huge proponent for video games, and while it's not a huge uh, meaning for his success, it's a clear indicator that just by playing video games, it somehow doesn't make you, it doesn't make you smarter or dumber or less productive in any way. As a matter of fact, some of the smartest people that I know personally within my own life are, are some of the sharpest, most productive, some of those caring people that I know. So to correlate those two things is just complete nonsense. Okay, so those are some of the positives, but now, Let's take a look at the not-so-pretty side, the dark side. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Studies have shown an increase in aggressive behavior given certain violent video games, as well as problems with social isolation, where kids would rather stay inside their homes instead of going outside and playing with their friends. And parents, this is definitely on you. Watch what sort of games you give to your kids. There's certain games that teach the wrong values to some of those kids. So some of them are learning violent behavior, some of them are learning that you know talking about problems isn't appropriate, but instead killing people is the right answer. So uh, in theory, this shouldn't actually manifest into behavior, but it, studies have shown that subconsciously these things actually do influence our personality, they influence our decision-making process, and they influence what we think about on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's also been health studies that show that video game playing for too long also leads to higher risk of cancer and also you know sitting down too long, having back problems. So there are some health negatives there from just sitting down for too long, sitting in front of a screen, not doing anything, could have a negative effect on you. But that's the same to be said about sitting on the, the couch watching too much TV, because if you're not outside exercising, we know exercise is good, and if you're not doing it, you're probably hurting your body more than you should be. So now those are some of the not so serious things. Let's talk about the serious stuff. Why so serious? Major cases of video game addiction range anywhere from suicide to murder to neglecting their kids. There are some serious incidences where it clearly shows that video game addiction can lead to massive problems. And when I was playing for more than 16 hours a day, every area of my life was being neglected and I was getting no traction whatsoever. And one day I just woke up and realized I had literally driven everything out of my life altogether. So video games have the same potential to become an addiction that can ruin a person's life, just like alcohol or drugs or any other habit that can be overdone and overused. And there's a good TED talk by Cam Adair who talks about the four main reasons 
why people play video games and why they're so addictive. You see, video games have the need to tap into our need for growth and achievement. But these feats are an illusion, right? Because those things don't actually translate into more money, better grades, or better relationships. But the same could be said about any hobby, right? Like playing football, you're handed a trophy if you do well, but it doesn't necessarily translate into more money, better relationships, unless of course you're getting scholarships or you decide to go pro, then that would might maybe would have some actual social benefits to you. But people also go pro in the gaming industry. But while that's rare, it's still, speaks to being the same as any other hobby, really, when it comes down to the rewards that you get from doing it. But you see, there's a tipping point when you play video games so much that it becomes more important than your own life, and that's where it becomes a real problem. You see, when I was about 13 to 19 years old, there was a point in my life when I was playing 16 hours a day where I was suicidal and miserable. And you could never tell that on the surface because I would hide it. Right? I would go to school and I would pretend like everything was okay, all the while thinking about video games as I'm going throughout the day, not accomplishing much. Because if I let people know that something was wrong with me, then there might be a chance that I wouldn't be able to go home and play video games. Parents might take it away, they might send me to counseling. So I tried as best as I could to cover it up, to pretend that nothing was wrong. Growing up, it was super easy for me to hide this addiction because I didn't have many close friends, so I didn't have to explain to anybody where I was for the past eight hours when I got home from school. I could just play games throughout the day. My parents didn't really think it was that big of a deal. It's a hobby. It's, you know, let him do whatever makes him happy. And that's where the mistake is. The problem shows up when the child or the person decides that playing the game is more important than any other activity. And that's all they think about, that's all they do. So how do you test to see whether or not you're addicted or a friend of yours is addicted or if your son or daughter is addicted? Well, try this simple test. Let your child or yourself play for one hour, setting a firm deadline that after that one hour, they're to quit, they're to unplug, they're to stop and go do something else. If, if you yourself are watching, try it as well. Try to play video games for one hour, and at the end of that one hour, if you can't quit, if you're struggling to quit, and then suddenly that goes on for hours, or an extra 30 minutes, or you go throughout the entire day, you've got the addiction and it's permanent, it's ingrained in your brain, and it's something that you now no longer have control over. It's an impulsive disorder to the point where you, you need the video games. It's your escape, you're dodging all your problems. There was also an article published about some of the biggest signs that show that video game addiction is present, and here are some of those signs. The first one is preoccupation. Do you think about video games all the time, even when you're at work, or you're in class, or when you're doing other things, when you're talking to people? Are you thinking about going home and playing video games, what next level you're going to be on, or what's the next item you're going to get for your character, that's a serious sign of it. The second sign being, do you play in secret? Do you try to avoid your friends and do you not tell anybody that you're going to go play video games? You make up another excuse of why you know you didn't get something done or why you're doing something uh, besides going out with your friends, for example. If you're trying to hide it, that's also a serious uh, example of uh, the addiction. A third component, which is interesting, and I exhibited this all the time, is aggression. Do you yell and scream when you when you lose, when you get upset? I used to do this all the time. I used to yell, ah, you know, just scream at the TV, at the at the computer screen, and it was it was a huge sign that I cared so much about the game that I was willing to just let my emotions run wild. The fourth one is a lack of control. So that's what we talked about the experiment when you talk about, okay, I'm gonna sit down and just play for two hours today, and then boom, six hours goes by. How did that happen? This happened to me regularly. I, initially, I tried to control it, but you simply cannot control it if you're addicted. It is an impulsive disorder. And the fifth and probably the most important one is defensiveness. If you're justifying the reasons why you should still play, trying to find ways to wiggle it into your life even when you can't control it. You're telling yourself, okay, you know, maybe I could just do it for fun. You know, I'm coming home, I'm socializing with my friends online, so it's not, you know, as bad as if I was just playing by myself, or, you know, I'm streaming so people can see it, I'm trying to make money from it. But if all the areas of your life are suffering, it's a clear indication that you're addicted to playing video games. And any addiction, any addiction uh, counselor will tell you that the first thing that people try to do when they're addressing an addiction is they try to justify why that addiction is in their life and why they need to keep it because that's part of their brain their impulsive brain trying to keep that part of ourselves this addiction that that's why it's so powerful and so hard to get rid of 
Understand if you have this addiction, you have a big part of your personality that's fighting against the other. You've got the one that wants to improve your life, and you've got the other piece that's trying to say, hey, no, listen, video games, we've been here. Don't, don't, don't get rid of us, man. We can live in harmony. You don't have to completely get rid of video games. You're fighting against two personalities, and you're fighting against that impulsive desire that your brain's created to say, we need video games, man. We, we've been doing this for so long. And so if you're a man, if you're a woman, what, whoever you are, you need to step it up. Step it up and say, listen, no more. I'm not listening to you anymore. Push back against that and say, I don't need you to live a happy and healthy life. Okay, so if, if you're fighting with that addiction, understand you're gonna be okay and your life will continue even beyond video games. You could get everything back together again. You could stop being depressed. You could stop with this addiction and your life will improve drastically beyond your wildest dreams if you actually get rid of the addiction. So how do you get rid of the addiction? Well, here's the facts. You must unplug now. That's it. There's no date to wait. There's no perfect timing. We'll wait till my subscription is up. No, you need to dig deep and do it now. You see, by you quitting now, this very moment, right now you're probably motivated by it and you need to act on that decision immediately. You need to delete the games, uninstall. This is what I did and it helped me get control over my entire life and everything started to improve uh, almost overnight. You'll be surprised what happens, how quickly your life just starts to get better within the first week, within the first two weeks. Uh, you'll, you'll have some struggles along the way, but you'll be surprised how quickly things will improve for you if you just unplug. And, and start getting everything together. So here are some helpful steps to help you get control over this addiction forever. So number one, you just need to uninstall everything. Get it all out of your life. That means getting uh, rid of all the games on your uh, computer, on your phone, get rid of the consoles, go out and sell it. So if you want your money back, go and sell it. Get rid of it, get the money back, but get it all out of your life. The more, if it's out of plain sight, you reduce the, the temptation for you to start playing again. And don't tell yourself, well, I'll, I'll play at a later date. Just get rid of it now. Get it all out and get control over it now. And I'm serious about the games on your phone. One simple game of Candy Crush, one simple game of Tetris, whatever it is, is all it takes to justify bringing one more game in, one more game in, and it all comes running back to you full-fledged and you're addicted again. And number two, no watching YouTube videos or Twitch channels about people playing video games. If you're, if you're seeing it, it starts to create that, that attraction in your mind again and it's just going to bring it right back in. So that means you need to get rid of all the channels that you're following that talk about games, any posts on Facebook any advertisements that you have going on, if you're getting emails, if you're, if you're seeing anything online, you just need to get rid of it, you know, click not relevant, click, you know, I don't wanna see this post. The, the more you do that, the more you increase the odds of this working long term. The third thing you need to do is you need to write down all the reasons why video games are bad for you, as well as all the reasons they're good for you. So you can figure out, okay, what are the positives, what are the negatives? And you'll see a huge list of the, the negatives. Make sure we refer to this as a video game addiction because we have identified that that's what it is. So make sure you specify all the areas of your life that are gonna improve, right? So talk about all the, all the reasons why you are not playing video games, right? All the reasons why you shouldn't play video games. Don't say why you should. Talk about why you shouldn't play video games. That way you can see all the positives, all the things that are gonna help you in your life. This will help solidify your decision on quitting video games altogether. The fourth thing that you need to do is you need to declare that you will never play video games again. Declare it. Use it emotionally, right? So put down your firm commitment. I mean, I use all kinds of curse words in mine. I just talked about how I was sick and tired of it. The more emotion that you just pour out, pour out your heart into this declaration and sign it at the bottom, confirming that you will never let this get control over your life ever again because that's what it does. Video game addiction controls your life. You don't if you're playing video games. Video games are controlling your life. And number five, you're gonna find that you have a lot of free time now. So that means you need to replace that free time with something else. So pick a new hobby, pick a new activity, go find something else to do. And at first it's gonna be boring. You're gonna say, man, this is like, like for me example, I started doing audiobooks. That's what I started doing. I said, I'm gonna listen to audiobooks in my free time now instead. And I'm just gonna learn a bunch of new things. And, and at first I was like, man, this is so boring. Dude, I'd rather be, you know, playing a game right now. I'd much rather be, you know, making progression. I just sitting here listening to this audiobook. This is such a drag. But over time, all of a sudden I was like, wow, you know, I like these audiobooks. This is, I, I look forward to listening to these audiobooks. I like what I'm learning. This is, this is really cool. And you start 
start to create new brain cells. Research actually shows this. The idea that you can't create brain cells beyond 25 is bull crap. It's been proven wrong. And so you're creating new brain cells when you start to do new habits and behaviors. And so your brain starts to, to associate good feelings with this new habit that you've now created. And, and before you know it, you don't even think about video games at all. Instead, now you're like, man, I can't wait to read that new book. Man, I can't wait to go and record one of these YouTube videos. Man, I can't wait to go to my new job. Man, I can't wait to go, you know, talk to that person who I've never, you know, talked to before when I was busy playing video games. This, this, this is where it's key. Replace it with something that will help you become who you want to be, right? So if you want to be a veterinarian, replace that habit with studying to become a veterinarian. You know, if you want to learn how to make money online, replace it with an activity of, you know, going online and researching, like legitimately researching, you know, how to make money online, not going and looking at other, you know, video games and seeing how can you make money through video games because you're not on the right track, you're eventually just gonna get right back into playing video games. That's what happened to me. I tried to make a gaming YouTube channel and I was back to playing video games over 16 hours a day. So I can promise you the addiction is permanent. You have to tell yourself that you're quitting forever and stick to that promise. I promise you that your life will become so much better. It'll become so much better if you just stick to these simple principles. So to conclude this video, I just want to say that not all video game playing is bad if you're not addicted. The same way drinking alcohol in moderation is not always bad. But if you know somebody who's an alcoholic, you know they cannot control their habitual behavior. You know that if they have one sip of alcohol, they go back to drinking all the time. It's the exact same psychological disorder. It's the exact same. And while you're not killing your liver, Instead, you're completely destroying all of your ambitions for life when you get soaked into video games. So it's just as destructive for you. If I haven't described you, and if you haven't clicked off the video by now, and you're just a moderate player, understand that it's okay. If you're playing from two to four hours a day, that's, that's perfectly okay. That's all right. As long as it doesn't dominate your thinking and become what you think about all day long. Like I said, I have friends that play like that and they're totally okay. They, they never became anything like what I became. It's, it's kind of rare to become a video game act, but I, but I have a feeling that some of you who are watching it to this point, maybe you're struggling with video game addiction and I just want to make this video to help you guys out because I feel like there's not enough material out there to identify that this is a real addiction uh, that's serious and, and can seriously you know destroy your life. So I hope this video is helping you out. If you like this type of content, consider subscribing. Just click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell because I'll be sending out more than three videos a week on self-help and psychology. And if you're trying to kick the gaming habit, trust me, I'm on your side because I won't be doing any videos about me playing games. If anything, I'll be posting more videos about how to get rid of the habit, how to make it long term. And we will win through this thing together. And it'll replace your time of the bad habits that you might have with some good, fulfilling things and topics that'll hopefully improve your life, that'll make some uh, major progress throughout your life. And we'll be practicing them together. We'll be talking about it in the discussions and the comment section. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I also have a Patreon page if you'd like to donate to the channel to help me improve the quality of these videos. If you're interested in seeing how my story unfolded, how I quit video games all together, consider checking out the video uh, I'll probably have it in one of these little boxes here. This is Mark Hancock signing out, and I will see you on the next video.